Hello again, you're watching the Scrapline Model Railway Weathering and uh, this is a separate video just to show you the weathering techniques on this Class 50 finishing the whole model off. Um, since the last video on how I weathered the roof, I wasn't 100% happy with the finish on it after I shot the video. Um, I found that once the thinners was on there, it left too much of a lumpy finish. Um, but being the fact that it was thinners, meant that all I had to do was get a bit of a stiff brush and um, scrape into what was already on there just to sort of loosen it up again and then basically just brushed off the excess powders that were on the roof and um, it left the residue from them coloured powders like obviously the darker areas around the fan and the exhaust ports were all there and it just removed anything that I didn't particularly want there and also enhanced all the um, areas where the roof peel is so weathering the rest of this loco as you can see I'm going to be showing you how I achieve all this uh, using slightly different techniques than, than um, in the earlier videos obviously picking out all the various bits of detail that you see on class 50s where the, the streakiness come down there um, and the areas around the vents getting them looking a little bit better and um, I won't show the video or how to do the bottom because that's pretty much basic as as per the, the, the first video that I did so yeah okay so the first thing I start off with doing this is the um, is the grills all the grill areas that's always the first thing and I go straight into matte coat varnish and I'll give that a, a gentle coat in all the vents. At this stage of it you don't necessarily need to be too particularly neat. Good idea just to get it on these Dividing bits as well. And then I'll try and get this. It doesn't necessarily have to dry off too much, but I've got general grime colour. So, again, if you've seen the previous videos, you'll know that this is just a mixture of various shades. Now I'm not going to go too heavy in here because I want to actually remove most of this again so Okay, just dabbing the brush out just to remove these tones from the brush and then I'm just going to get some of the, the black, black soot colour. Um, always a good idea just to check the images on the internet of what, um, sort of like the various places where these locos weathered and what sort of tones were in particular areas so a lot of the, the soot was always at the top of these uh, grills. And the vents at this end, I've just quickly varnished them off of camera. And um, 
another tip or technique is just to if you kind of just wanted a dusty effect it's just to flick off the bottom of the loco so the powders actually spray up into the varnish and that creates this effect which is also a good technique if you kind of want that effect at the side of the loco is once you've varnished it again just load your weathering powders up and then just flick off the bottom and it will flick the powders up and once that's dry is then just again with a soft brush and just brush them down just to remove any of the other loose powders and then you'll find that a lot of this will still be sort of stuck in its place where it needs to be okay so before i apply this diluted varnish i'm just going to brush down this Get most of the powders just off and out of the way. And then the same again at the other end. Into some matte coat varnish. Um, and I've got some mixed up weathering powders here. Which I'm just going to stir in some varnish into there. Now, unlike doing a heavily weathered loco, um, I do believe that the Class 50s weren't kept in horrendously bad condition. Uh, Dirt-wise, they were fairly clean locos. Um, even the ones out in their later days weren't too bad. So what I tend to do with this is just to dilute this with as much thin as I um, varnish as I possibly can. If you get too much in the way of the weathering powders in there, you end up with a almost a too grimy loco. So this is quite diluted. And just keep sort of adding the varnishes until you're sort of happy that you've got it fairly watery. Okay. Okay, so taking your diluted mixture. I'm just going to paint over the body sides. And as you can see, as, as when I get closer to the, the grills, the weathering gets a lot heavier, which isn't a problem at this, at this moment. Okay, so I've got to that stage, all I'm going to do is just clean the brush out and go back into a clean brush into that mixture of uh, weathering powders and paint again. Continuing your way along the body sides. Again, if you're feeling it's getting a little bit too heavy on the weathering, just keep your brush clean. And the further away you get from the vents, the, obviously the cleaner the weathering will be. Remembering to get the brush all the way down to the bottom of the loco.
I seem to have forgot to do that vent there. So what I'm going to do is just put some tones and just get a touch of bit of weathering powders on the brush and just get those in there. Just give it a variant of colour. I can come back to that bit a little bit later on. Okay, so I've now gone across the whole loco. Um, obviously it's a bit too heavy for my liking, so I'm going to tone it down and I'm um, going to be using size 4 flat brush, slightly curved. Um, now you could do this in thinners, or if you rather avoid putting too much thinners on the side of the, um, the locos, you can actually just use um, straight out of the pot matte coat varnish. So... So dabbing into some varnish and uh, dabbing most of it off the brush, I'm just going to go over these body sides. Now the varnish that's on here at the moment, the first layer that I put on here, wasn't at all completely dry, it was still sticky, uh, which is a perfect, you get it quite perfectly when it's like that. Back into another layer of varnish again, and again just removing any excess powders off or any weathering using the varnish. So to give you an idea, every time, like now, back into another layer of varnish, streaking down the bodywork until I get to the point where it becomes almost unworkable and it becomes a little bit too sticky. Just dab the end of the brush out on a bit of tissue, back into some varnish, move along to the next bit. Good thing about using this technique it doesn't strip off any of these logos and stuff again little bits like that which are a bit stubborn to get off are gone Okay, so I've gone across that. Um, if anyone's familiar with the Class 50 knows that you get a lot of grime runs off these roof gutters and um, that runs down in these particular areas. Again, down there. Um, I'm going to enhance areas a little bit more in a minute. Um, but that's that stage done for now. Okay, next stage is cotton bud into thinners, dabbed onto tissue paper so it's not too wet. And I'm just going to go around these sort of areas and just remove 
a lot of the weathering that's been applied in the places where I don't particularly want it and I want it clean back to the paintwork. And if you're finding the cotton buds are getting a bit clogged up, go straight into a clean side. So to make sure that these bits stand out well is I try and clean as much weathering as I can either side of them and in between. So all the way along here I try and make this area as clean as I possibly can. Again, I noticed when I've done the other side of this this loco that the um, the Hornbury factory weather weathering they put on here because I removed a lot of it. It seems to make life a little bit difficult to to work with these sort of weathering techniques. It can get a little bit sticky. And just remember to keep your lines straight. Okay, into the vents and cotton bud with thinners. This may take a good few um, cotton buds to do this, depending on how heavy the weather and powders you put on there. Again, any areas that you want to sort of clean back. Clean cotton bud into a bit of thinners and then just get up any areas of the weathering.
again as that's noticeable in the camera when you look at areas just down there where it's a bit curved because I tend to straighten them up as best as I can back into a brush maybe with a bit of thinners and just to try and get them up a bit And the same with the vent down this end. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Um, obviously with all the undercarriage now, this is the same technique as in my first uh, videos that I've done on the Class 40. Um, obviously because there's a lot of weathering powders on here already, you can sort of work them in and not worry too much about having the, um, the white base coat on first so you can initially just use these as as they are and just paint them powders into the underside using varnish again just being really careful the fact that you've, you've got all your pickups and stuff behind these frames if any, anything gets on them it's, they're easy enough to take apart and, and uh, clean if need be now, once that sort of begins to go sticky, if you want to add a few more weathering powder tones to it, you can just get it on the point where it's not wet like it is now, but tacky so the powders cling to it. Once it's all dried, brush off any excess powders. Just another little bit of a area which I didn't cover in any other videos is, is the buffers. So I'm just going to stick a coat of that that varnish mixture that I did in the beginning over the buffers. Leave that to dry for not too long. And uh, weathering powder, which is just the general color again. Just gonna powder the front end of these. So we'll get a little bit sort of over around on top of the buffer beam steps as well. And the front end detail. You want to aim to get quite a bit of weathering powder into the sort of sticky varnish mixture and that adds a kind of a texture to these buffers. Then I'll leave that to dry about five minutes and I've done that one so I'll go into a cotton bud straight into varnish and then straight into the black weathering powder so you've got something like that and then straight on the end Okay, so once we've done all the body sides, it's just a case of adding any faded paintwork that you want to get on the body sides.
Again, remember, if you've gone a little bit too heavy, um, the airbrush or any sprayed varnish on, on that will tone it down a little bit. And just wiping off. Just remember to make sure that this is all dry before you put these uh, white weathering tones on. And I tend just to go over with a soft brush just to remove any little bits of fluff or dust on there that shouldn't be on the model. And there we have it. Ready for the airbrush to get the varnish over it to seal everything in. Let's put the front end detail back on again. And very happy with the finish on that. So again, if you like the videos, please do subscribe. Uh, share the videos around, comment. Any questions, as I say, um, just stick them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer what I can.